Hello F11 members and welcome to the fundamentals of post-production video tutorial for issue 48, January 2016. Happy New Year! Well, apologies for the slight croakiness of my voice. I'm recording this with a cold. I always seem to get them over Christmas. But uh, hopefully you'll have read the accompanying feature are uh, 10 things I learned about post-production in 2015. The thing is, doing these video tutorials for you has uh, forced me to uh, address all sorts of issues that maybe I wouldn't have looked at, and it's made me much better at my post-production, and I've learned a lot. And one of the things, actually, that came out just in the last uh, video tutorial of 2015 was the issue of camera calibration. So I'd like to readdress that now here with this picture of tar steps on Exmoor. Now if you look at this picture as it's imported here, it's showing a touch of clipping of shadows here. Now if I come down to the camera calibration tab here, you can see where it says profile I've got the default setting of Adobe Standard selected. Now if I just click on Camera Faithful, the next one down, what you see there, just by doing that, is the clipping of the shadows is rectified, which tells me that Adobe's camera calibration does tend to clip slightly shadows and highlights. That's something to be aware of, particularly with high contrast scenes. And as this is quite a high contrast scene with the highlights of the wet stone here, the wet paving stones, and the shadows underneath, uh, I'm going to uh, so go with the camera faithful setting. Okay, the next thing I'm going to look at is the actual white balance of the picture. Now generally speaking, as you probably know, I hardly ever adjust this, but in this particular case, because we shot down here uh, in the valley quite early in the morning, it's got quite a cool blue feel. That normally would all be part of the appeal, but I just feel it's suppressing somewhat the autumnal colours here of the trees on the opposite bank. So I'm just going to come along here to my white balance setting on the right and just select Auto. And as you can see, that warms up the picture quite significantly. I could, of course, choose any of the other options here or set it myself. But I'm actually going to go with Auto, auto setting on the white balance. I think it looks delivers quite a in this particular case, quite a natural looking uh, color balance to the picture. Next thing I'm going to move on to is looking at the contrast of the picture. Now I already have mentioned the fact that I'm very aware of the contrast here in the actual stones, but elsewhere in the background and the foreground, the lighting was overcast, it's a little bit flat, I think the picture could do with a bit of contrast. So I'm actually going to use another preset here in the Lightroom. If I come to my point curve and select medium contrast here, it's put a bit of punch into the picture. Granted, I've lost some of my detail here in the bridge and underneath it, but we'll come to that. First thing I'm going to do to rectify that is actually come back to my shadows here and boost them quite a bit right up to about 50 to try and get a bit more detail coming through in the darkness under the bridge. I could go all the way of course and in fact I'm going to be quite bold by going up to about 75% to pull those shadows back. Okay, the next thing I need to look at is the top of the bridge, which uh, it's not burning out if I hover my cursor 
over that area and look at these figures up here underneath the hexistogram at the same time. I do have detail there, but I want to just darken it down a touch. I want to see more detail in those stones, but just that area. So what I'm going to do now is use the adjustment brush. Now then, if I just hover the brush over my intended area, I want to adjust the size of that brush so that I can just select those stones. And so I use the square brackets on my keyboard to make for a smaller brush area. I now wipe this across the area that I want to affect. Don't worry too much about what it's doing visibly at the moment because I can fine tune that subsequently. I'm just really using this adjustment brush to select my area. Don't think of it as a paintbrush tool. That's very different. Uh, what it's actually um, what I can do now is adjust using this exposure slider that area that I've used to select I've used the brush stroke to select to darken it down a touch and I'll go to roundabout there and I'll come back on my highlights also and you can see just fine tune that a touch excuse me one second Okay, so you can see what I've done there. I've used the paintbrush tool to select the area of the actual bridge, and I've used the highlight recovery just for that area, and the exposure slider to put a bit of uh, detail back into the, the stones along the top of the bridge there. Okay, I'm pretty pleased with how that looks. I can just use the exposure slider to get it just where I want and I reckon around about 50 oh, it's very sensitive this slider and about there is good for me okay good what else needs to be done it's always always a case of not just playing with sliders it's a case of sitting back having a cup of coffee and thinking about what needs to be done. And the question really is not much now. Um, I'm just going to click on done because I'm finished with the exposure brush there. Uh, I just want to uh, add just a touch of vibrance now to the image. Um, so we're going to get some of those autumn colors coming through. Around about 15, I think. Uh, I'm going to sharpen the picture as usual using Lightroom's preset here. Because there's detail throughout the image with no areas of indeterminate sky or water or whatever, um, there's no need to use any masking. And now if I come back to the start and finish point of this picture, you can see uh, it's quite, quite a difference really. The most obvious thing being the uh, color ba white balance. Um, I've taken out that coolness, neutralized that in the interests of the autumnal feel of the picture. I've enhanced the shadow detail. I've retained, I've pulled back the detail there in the, in the stones uh, and uh, I think really it's quite subtle and just shows where we are with the post-production. All in all it's been taken me less than 10 minutes as do most of my images okay that's it uh, and i hope uh, you will continue to send us your suggestions for what you'd like to be seen dealt with in future fundamentals of post-production video tutorials but i think the most significant thing to come out of this particular tutorial is that consideration of the effect of the camera calibration setting on the tonal range of these pictures. Thank you and see you next month.